Hello and welcome back to No Man's Sky, everybody. Elon Paul here. So we're on the permadeath uh, run, but as you saw by the title of this, this is kind of an in-between uh, episode. It doesn't really go along the main line. So we came out with this in-between Wednesdays because what I wanted to do is I wanted to tell you a little bit about what we're about to do in the next episode. Well, not really in the next episode, but in this episode, we're going to finish up something in regards to our um, multi-tool that we're going to be making, the new staff. But we have to make a device that's this, the concentric transducer, but we need a superconductor. To make a superconductor, we need to make enriched carbon as a semiconductor, as you can see here, which requires for the semiconductor thermic condensate, nitrogen salt. Now the thermic condensate requires sulfurine, which is something we have to go get, as well as nitrogen salt, which needs nitrogen to make the superconductor. And we need the enriched carbon as well, because that's what this requires. The enriched carbon is made from radon. Now, I did a little research. Radon, by itself, can be converted into nitrogen, which in turn can be converted into sulfurine. Or I may have that backwards. I think it's radon into sulfurine, sulfurine into nitrogen, or vice versa, something along those lines. Either way, all we really need to do is to get the radon. And it's a one-to-one -one ratio if we combine it with oxygen, which we have plenty of. But I will need at least 750 oxygen to do all this. So A, we need more oxygen. And two, we need to get a ton of radon. At least 750. I'm going to try to go for 1,000 if I can. So to get radon, we can find radon on planets that are on uh, cold worlds. We can use an atmospheric device to get that. So that's what we're going to do in this episode. We're going to try to, if I can get it to work, I'm going to try to pause from time to time and or else I'm going to have to stop the recording and then combine recordings. But the pausing doesn't seem to be working just yet. So I'm going to head up to the synthesis uh, companion up here and I'm going to get the atmospheric harvester, which I don't think I have, but I'm going to double check it. So it's sending me over there to the exo suit guy. I have no idea. Oh, survey device. That's why. Yes. Okay. So we had to get a surveying device. Let me go through here real quick. All right, here we go. So we got mineral extractor, gas extractor. It's not here. It should be on one of the other ones. Here. Uh, let's see. Feeders, processors, left-hand side, oxygen harvester. Yeah, it looks like we already have the atmosphere harvester, which require ammonia, which we've got. We need a little bit more. Two metal plates and two hermetic seals. And I don't know how much it contains when it's done, so we'll pause while it's pulling everything in. Uh, we do need the survey device just to play it safe, so I'll go ahead and hit this guy, the multi-tool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, let's see. So we need the survey device. Look for these. Let me see here. Oh, there it is. It's over here. Uh, quantum computer, which I'm glad we learned, a magnetic resonator. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this. Hey. Now I gotta listen to him blab again. Kick me out like that. Survey device. Now we can get the survey device as part of our uh, base building option, uh, which we're not gonna do. But what we do need to do is to install the survey device, which is, I'm gonna put it up here with the rest of them. Uh, I don't know why the analysis visor is, see here, we put something here. Makes no difference. I shouldn't have put it there to begin with. So this guy, it's an A-class. Uh, let's see, let's put you there. There. Let's see how much power this gives us by doing it this way. Um, let's go ahead and get this powered up a little bit. Okay, good. Um, it looks like you need to do that, so let's go ahead and just take care of you while we're at it. Okay. So let's head back to the ship. We're going to look for a cold world here, but we need to create a base, and that's the biggest issue. I really didn't want to have to create a base, but I'm going to have to. It is what it is, right? So let's go ahead and get there. So this is going to be kind of a long time for me in doing this, and a short time for you to watch it, I think. All right, so there's a corrosive moon. Do we have any planets in this system? Which I don't think we've landed on all of them. No, we haven't. And that's the petrified planet. So let's take a look at all the other planets here. That is corrupted. Dusty. I don't think we have a frozen world here. If I'm not mistaken. 
pretty sure we don't. Just gotta get past the anomaly real quick. Let's get out of the reach of everybody. There's another world right here, but I can't see it. I don't remember what it is, but I'm pretty sure it's not frozen. And it looks like my pulse drive is dropping down. I really need an upgrade for that thing, don't I? There's the world. What do you got for me, pal? Ashen, so that's a hot planet. We can get some materials from there, but not what we're looking for. Uh, dusty. Overgrown. Okay, so it looks like we're going to be using our hyperdrive here, folks. Let's go ahead and do that and head out. And we don't have to go far. Uh, Corvax, two star. Let's look for something that has a lot of planets, shall we? I um, think that qualifies. Let's head over there and check it out. Alright. Hope everybody's doing well. Again, like I said, this is kind of an oddball episode because it comes out shortly after the Wednesday episode. So, you know, kind of an odd thing. Hey, what do you know? First contact. Not a surprise, but yet it is. Uh, iridescent, activated copper, so this is kind of... Oh, dissidence. Go figure. Okay, we may look for a ship there later, but I'll do that on my own. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, unknown is... Overgrown... I need a cold world. Neither one of those are cold. I'm going to check them anyway, but just so we know what they are. Paradise planet, what do you know? Welcome to the Isentum system. Gamma root, so that's high energy. That is tiny, which means it's really far away. Watch it be the one I'm looking for. Stellar corruption, nope. Definitely not it. And there's a planet right at the edge over here. I'm going to have to get out of the way of this one. Because the other one will just simply get in the way of me being able to see it. Dusty. Of course it is. Alright, so it doesn't look like we have any cold planets here. But we just found a paradise planet. At least that's something. So, if you're wondering about the system, now you know. It's all red, so I don't know. It may not be that great of a system to go check out. But there's dissonance here. So what I may do, I'm going to try my best to see if I can get my uh, pause to work here. Hang on just a second, and we'll see what happens. What you see here is a very rudimentary base. We're on an ice planet that I found. I happen to be near a um, transmission tower. I used the landing pad for it, and there happened to be a nice oxygen uh, field over here that I was able to pick up a bunch of oxygen as well. So, kind of a lot of benefits to being in this planet, in this system. And here's my atmosphere harvesters, and of course, as predicted, it's pulling in radon. So it's fully charged up, and it's going to pull in a full stack of radon. That's why I have three units here. I've started the other two units. We're moving right along. It hasn't decimated too much out of my inventory, so we're, we're doing okay. Um, I also had ended up uh, getting a nice ship um, on the other system. I haven't, uh, I still have this one here. I haven't uh, fixed it all up yet and done anything with it. It's also a B-class, though. I was hoping for an A, but it is what it is. I'll showcase that in the further episode sometime. Uh, we'll get that going again. So, I'm not going to tell you what it is, other than it's very different from the ship that you see here. But we'll use this probably for another episode, and then we'll get other things done. So, cold planet here. They do have blizzards here and things like that. Um, salt. As you can see, top right, you got salt, dioxide, and copper. So, we're in good shape for resources, and it's not terrible. They have snowstorms. But, you know, it doesn't seem to be too terrible right now. Uh, and, you know, it's usual fauna, flora and fauna. Only five different creatures on this planet, so... Got a flying creature that likes to uh, sit here and buzz our heads. I don't know why for some reason, but it does like to do that. But that's pretty much it. I did pick up uh, all the creatures on one planet recently, so that was good. 
Um, we do need to get more creatures, of course, and we'll work on that later. So, there we go. As you can see, got three of the five. Two more on the ground at some point. I'll go ahead and get those, get a little extra boost. So, yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, it took me quite a while to get what I got, so it is what it is at this point. Oh, there was a, one little guy there. All right, so we have one more land-based creature floating around here someplace that I can get in order to get my uh, extra nanite boost, which would be kind of nice. Oh, there he is. And enjoys the hunt. How much does he enjoy the hunt? Let's find out. There, just want to get rid of that plant before it attacked me. Apparently doesn't like to hunt me, so we're good. Okay, excellent. So I'm going to take my... Uh, character inside while we wait for these to get moving. As you can see, this one was already at 15 when we jumped in there. It's at 24 right now. Shouldn't take long for me to get them. And then we'll come back as we are able to produce things. You know, I'll go ahead and disassemble those and see if I can get the components out of them. And once I get the components, I'll build a medium refiner in here so that way we can combine units and start developing the pieces we need to get things going. All right, we'll see you in a few moments. So as you can see, it looks like we are at 189, almost 190 on the first capsule here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull these out to start with. We've got 40 to go on this, so I'm just going to go ahead and pull this out. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing to these two. And we're going to get things going here so we can show you what's going on. Um, it's two, and that's the third one. Okay, so they're almost finished. So that gives me, as you can see, a ton of radon. So... I need to uh, recharge my... There. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to make... Um, the first thing is the enriched carbon. So I'm going to go ahead and make that one one now. And I'm going to say it again. One. Right now. At least it's a 300. Now we need to create a... Where'd it go? A refiner, but I don't have the medium. So we have the large one. It's just a portable refiner, pardon me. It's going to be over here. My bad. Large refiner. There we go. Which requires five microprocessors to make. So let me see what we can do about that. I think we can do it. I think we have the materials. Yeah, we do. There we go. There we go. So we're going to do the large refiner, right? Hate when they put it backwards. I don't know why that is. There we go. And we're going to open that sucker up and we're going to drop in the radon. There it is. Now we can only drop in 250, but that's okay. As you can see, it converts immediately into nitrogen. So let's go ahead and just get that going. Um, it only makes a 3 to 1 ratio, so that's the reason why we have the oxygen. Uh, let's go ahead and just drop in 250 oxygen. And as you can see, it's a one-to-one -one ratio now. Granted, we're using two elements to make one thing, but that was the whole point behind doing it this way. So I'm going to go ahead and get that going. It takes about three minutes to get done. So we will get that moving along. The second thing we need to do is we're going to convert the, the rest of our radon into... Um, or actually, we need to convert... Hold on, I know this. The nitrogen with oxygen, we'll combine it. So we're going to do another batch of this, convert it into nitrogen again, another 250 nitrogen. Combined with oxygen, it will give us um, the last element that we needed. Hold on, I know this. I know this. Wait a second. Thermic condensate, which is over here. Sulfurine, right. So that's what we're going to get our sulfurine from, from nitrogen and oxygen. So we'll go ahead and make that here in just a couple minutes. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. So we've just about completed our last section here. We got sulfurine now. So let's take a look at our inventory. So you'll notice we now have sulfurine. We have uh, we have oxygen, of course. There it is. Nitrogen and uh, where's my third element? I'm missing one here. Hold on. I know where it is. We're missing something here. Hold on. Oh, 
That's right. We used the the, the radon to make the enriched carbon already. That's correct. Okay, my bad. So we've got our radon, we've got our neutron, uh, nitrogen, and we've got our sulfurine. So once again, what we want to do is look at the recipe for our concentric transducer. So it's a superconductor, a magnetized ferrite. We already got that. So we need to make the superconductor. So we go back here. We're going to check our superconductor, which requires the enriched carbon, which we've already got. And we need a semiconductor. Semiconductor is here. We need thermic condensate and nitrogen salt. Now to make the thermic condensate, we need, first of all, the nitrogen, which we just got, and the condensed carbon. So we're going to make that now. And we need the thermic condensate, which where is that over here, which was the sulfurine and the condensed carbon. We got both of those. So now we have both of those. We're now we're going to make our semiconductor. Yay. And guess what we get to build now? We have to make our superconductor. So we finally have that. Last but not least, we can now make our concentric transducer. So now we have all three parts, as you can see. So we've got it. So the next step in our thing here, now first of all, I'm going to go ahead and we can't actually remove this unit here, so I'm just going to leave it here for now. We'll come back to this base at another time, and we will, um, I got some ships flying over. Okay, we're going to come back to this base at another time, and I will go ahead and remove all those things. So let's take a quick jaunt up to the space station. Let's check our... Nope, don't want to do that. Earn ahead of the for the voltaic staff. So we got to contribute to prove our standing. And we've earned the last proofing, so we have to speak with the autophage to proceed. So we need to go back to the system that we started with. So let's go into our warp drive. See, it's already telling us where to go. I found a ship in that system, so don't pay any attention to it. I'll show it to you later. Okay. And we're going to complete the staff now. There's our autophage. Let's line up with it. So in about one minute, we will have completed our staff. Now it looks like our pulse drive is getting a little low. Hit it before it uh, gets down below 20 there. How's our other charges doing? Eh, Anti-gravity's all right. All right, good deal. Boy, there's a lot of garbage in my inventory, I tell you. I got some cleaning up to do, don't I? Whoa, okay, slow it down. There we go. And we're in for a landing. Scan. Uh, yeah, oh, there it is. Okay, good. So we just need to talk to him first. Divergent construct. Masona watches me curiously. I have the impression that this final blueprint is especially precious and that earning it signifies a milestone of sorts. We're going to ask about it. Disruptor, the last blueprint for the staff. We require a terminal, the multi tool. Like nothing, like the constructions of something, own holy staff. Leave. The autophage takes great care to speak clearly, their effort palpable. They fill the communication gaps with gestures indicating that I re will require a terminal to finalize the construction of my voltaic staff. Though these beings are obviously advanced, I have no sense of being prejudged or scorned. Each autophage has conducted an apparently unbiased assessment and chosen to grant another blueprint. Divergent construct, Masona, regards me with cautious approval as we say farewell. Okay, so here's the terminal. So we're going to do staff assembly. Head component, there's our transducer. Core component, 
the Atlanta DM chamber, and finally the fiberglass grip as far as the pole component is concerned. There, is, there it is. Let's assemble it. And we get a nice... It's a C-Class. I, I keep in mind, it's not that great. But we got a supercharged slot on it already. And we got some other things on here too, including the, the polyphonic core. So we're going to go ahead and grab this. And we're going to take it. We don't have to exchange anything. So we do have an A-Class, of course, over here. We'll come back to that later. But we're going to go ahead and take the staff. And there we go. This is our new character with his new Voltaic staff. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. And we've achieved the journey milestone. Diplomat, I met 550 aliens. Congratulations to me. So let's go back to him and finish out this particular quest. Staff, this is an important disruptor. I am to be here to see this. I am glad to be here to see this. A staff makes much something possible. May wish to upgrade it. Autophage pauses. Their battered, corroded face stares directly into mine. They speak slowly and with gravity. If something say the something words, disruptor, something may, something, this staff will, something that were something before. Ask him to repeat that. It's going to get clearer now. Looks uncomfortable. They make a strange rasping sound as though clear in their throat. Something me, Disruptor. I do not wish to voice the something of that entity. If blanks say the correct words, something may also find the staff will open something that were closed before. Will open doors that were closed before, I guess? May know th something may know the entity already? That one, the, that one, the Corvax, something. Probably worship. One more repetition. If you say the correct words, you may also find the staff will open doors that were hidden before, not closed, hidden before. You may know the entity already that won the Corvax worship. He, obviously the Atlas. All right, so we have completed the mission, the audience with the autophage. Awesome. So let's take a look real quick. So we have completed almost all the missions except for the prayer. But it's asking us to visit the autophage synthesis terminal one last time. I guess there it is. Go visit it. We exchanged void mode so we can get more stuff, as you can see, which we're not going to get it right now because we already have everything, but you know, we can't afford anything else either. Warm up the autophage, complete prayers of the machine to proceed. So that is going to be our next thing. So, where'd it go? Prayers of the Machine is what we're going to complete next. Search for computing units and observe their responses. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to hold off on doing any more of this particular thing. I just wanted to show you us show you how we could complete the staff. So it looks like we got to head out that way to the Corvax Simulation CPU. So we're going to go ahead and call it here. I am going to get a very fast screenshot. There we go. I think that looks pretty good right there. Don't you? All right. So that should take care of it. Thank you all for watching. This was just, like I said, a very short video, about 15-20 uh, minutes long, just to show you the assembly of the new staff. And we'll look for more staff weapons as we go in the future. But for now, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Please hit the like and subscribe, and we'll see you again next time. Take care, everybody. Gotta wave goodbye. <laughs>